Hey and welcome back everyone. I'm uh, focusing in this video today on a, the idea of hacking your Korg uh, Volca modular. And by hacking it, I don't mean doing anything to it in terms of uh, inside of it, affecting it, um, altering it. Um, it's all external hacking and that's why I've put hacking in quotes. So I have to say that I've owned the Volca modular for about a week now and I've been doing some videos and I appreciate the uh, feedback that some of you have provided. I offer these videos maybe like you do as a fan and as someone who is experimenting with a new instrument that I have to say over the last week I've found to be pretty remarkable and amazing in terms of its potentials. Again it lists for about 199 US and I've discovered that um, it can do quite a few different things. It has a lot of versatility to it and it's a device that I believe if you are new to modular and you want to stick with the semi-modular route and not get into buying modules which can be a little overwhelming and also quite expensive then this might be exactly what you're looking for. If you already have a number of Volcas you could certainly use this in combination with those and have a really amazing setup. In fact I was thinking of myself maybe purchasing in the future a second one just because I think it could be very versatile having two of these going playing two different parts and so forth. Um, also combining it with the vocal drum which is coming out I believe later in March. So I'm showing you here some patch sheets and this is one of the things I was curious about if you've discovered any on your own. I did a Google search and found on Reddit that someone very nicely had made some of these patch sheets so it's pretty convenient although I have to say that it's hard it almost like these patch sheets replicate some of the challenges you might have with putting in those little mini DuPont cables it's pretty hard I think to notate on a small patch sheet exactly what's going where um, another option of course is to simply take a screenshot or if you take a video you can replicate your own patches and it's one of the reasons actually I make some of these YouTube videos just for myself not just for you to watch because I feel like I can go back and if I have a particular sound that was good I can certainly replicate that just by looking closely at the video but the patch sheets again could be useful if you're interested in exploring that. So what I'm going to do today here is actually just show you my setup and this is how I've been making these videos. So I take one of those multiples, those passive uh, multiples, and I plug it into the out. Actually in this case, um, I should edit that out. I, I put it coming out of the sink out. You don't want to do that obviously. Just made a mistake, but I will correct that shortly. I'm putting on a stand and this is one of those um, sit stands I created for some other gear actually for that I created for my Coma field kit. And you can check out my video on making stands for your gear if you like. So what I'm doing is taking just two outs here. I'm taking a 3.5 millimeter to quarter out. So I'm taking the sound from the Volca, basically having it twice. First time it's going to go into my ETC video synthesizer and that's what you've been seeing on these videos as far as creating a visual effect from the audio. And then the second one is just going into my mixer so I can record that for you today. In the sound you'll hear today, I will not do any uh, post-production. So it's one of the things just to let you know so that potentially you're curious about what it sounds like. You'll kind of know. So I'm just getting the ETC set up here. And I wanted to mention in this video today, then I'll show you some different techniques to approach using what I'm calling hacking of the DuPont cables. And it's not really hacking, you're not doing anything, you're just basically patching stuff. And one advantage of using DuPont cables, whether you're using this synthesizer, whether you're using, say, the Olectron 4060 MK2, which you could check out my videos on, you're using the DuPont cables. And the ones that come with the vocal modular, I don't have a close-up here, but they're a little better than some of the generic ones I've purchased. They have a nice rounded edge to them such that I think it's just very good for patching. And indeed, you'll note that some of the jacks as you're going in and out here, particularly in the, um, which module am I thinking of? The uh, splitter one up top, it, it gets very um, tricky sometimes just to patch those in. And I'll show you then some other techniques you can use today to also patch. So you can use longer DuPont cables and if you go on Amazon you can get a whole package of them. Um, you could get male to male, male to female, female to female for really cheap. And so having a combination of those allows you to um, lengthen the cables. I'll do a video later on with breadboards and that might be another fun thing to look at. I will use some electronic components here coming up 
to also give a sense of maybe how you can alter some of the uh, signal of working with your Volca modular. But as I was saying, if you're using um, the DuPont cables, whether with this instrument, with the Olectron 4060, or say with some of the folk tech gear out there, which, which I own one of the modules, um, conduit and resist, then you're pretty familiar with using the DuPont cables and there's actually an advantage to using these even though they're small sometimes in terms of patching it's very nice sometimes that you can actually alter the signal by as I'm showing here incorporating resistors, transistors, and capacitors. So I'll show you in just a second here an experiment with some of these. I do this extensively in my Olectron videos. I'm showing you there those alligator clips which are very cheap to purchase. You can buy them at big box stores, you can buy them at Amazon and electronic stores like Fry's in the States, whatever. And those are very handy because basically you can take one end of those, clip it to your end of the DuPont cable and then make a really nice connection. So I think it's one opportunity to use them to create um, different combinations of sounds with your Voca modular. So let's um, turn up the volume here a little bit you're going to hear it. And I'm just realizing that in my, um, I'm doing voice voiceover as you might tell, so I'm actually not hearing the um, sound that you're hearing as I'm recording this, so I'm gonna to try to do this intuitively and I won't say a lot about the sound, but yeah, the sound will be changing here. So what I'm trying to do first is to patch um, a couple of points and you may discover that there are some sweet spots on your modular, for example, um, this is the carrier signal. I found that's like really useful to take that from that first block of the instrument. And then I'm going to patch it. And what I'm going to do here is just show you, so you're hearing the sound. And then um, as you saw with the Olectron video, one of the things you can do is create some really cool patching with that. So I don't think the Voca modular is as versatile in the sense of using electronic um, capacitors, electronic um, components, but I think it's more versatile musically. The sequencer, of course, and all that you can do with wave folding and that West Coast synthesis that happens a lot, say, on the left side of the instrument and also in the middle of the instrument in terms of those blocks. So what I'm doing here is trying a series of different electronic components to give you a sense of what things might sound like. So this is the pure signal of just making that normal connection. And then I have the electronic component patched in. And you'll be able to hear some difference in the sound. And you know, one of the things that I've noted here is that anything, when I switch in a second to LEDs, because presumably, and again, I'm not an electronics engineer, so please comment um, as you see fit on the comment section here on YouTube. But I noticed with anything that might take a little juice to run it, um, it may not be compatible with this particular system. In this series of tests, I noted there were quite a few differences putting in resistors and capacitors. And I'm trying to think later on, there's, there's a few other components I use. But using something like an LED, you'll note there isn't going to be um, anything sonically. I think that's, that's different. Now, conversely, if you look to your right there, you see the Olectron. If you look at my Olectron videos, of course, with that unit, you have a power block. And so this here, you could see, we're not gonna get the LED lighting up or anything like that. And from what I could tell listening to it as I recorded it, I didn't notice anything different. So again, using the Olectron with our power block, we would have much more success. And so there are limitations to what you can do in terms of some of this patching and quote hacking as I'm calling it. But because of the musicality, the wave folding, and some of the other things like the sequencer, I think it's a very small complaint indeed. And again, the Volca form factor, if you have other Volcas, it really is wonderful to uh, work with. As I'm patching the next one here, one of the things I discovered recently with the Volca for having it, say, over a week now, is I didn't think I would actually use the internal speaker. And the internal speaker, like any internal speaker, is not great. I'm patching another example here. This you'll hear a little more sound, um, sonic variation as it gets going. But I didn't think I would actually use this internal speaker and what I discovered is I will take the Volca and I've been using it primarily just off batteries. I don't have an adapter for it yet. I used non-alkaline at first and it 
ran, it drained pretty quickly and that was what it shipped with. I just put in some rechargeable alkaline and they're, they're pretty good actually, so it's been lasting a while. I like the fact actually you don't have to plug it in and so what you could do is you could sit down on your couch or chair watching um, YouTube, whatever you want to do, and you can just take some of your DuPont cables and patch away. And it's a really intuitive and experimental way to approach things and I think it's unlike any other piece of gear I've used in that sense trying another um, bit of patching here to try out. In this case, this is a um, little mini piezo speaker, and that one actually did affect. It didn't sound, I didn't hear any signal coming out of the speaker itself, I listened, um, but it actually did have a nice uh, effect on the, the circuit. Sorry, I'm looking to see what I'm patching here. I think it's a resistor. It has a sonic effect, you'll notice. Kind of a good one from what I recall. So. When I use the, the 4060 to your right, what you see there, I used to actually sit on the couch, do some patching, and then I would plug it into a mini speaker. It doesn't have an inter internal speaker, and I have to say again, I didn't anticipate actually using the internal speaker and liking it, but in this case, I think it's actually wonderful. You can just sit down, create some patches, and even though it's, it's a small, tinny speaker, you still get a sense of what the sonic potential of that patch that you're creating is going to sound like, and then it's an even greater surprise you plug it in to your speakers or your mixer and throw it through some nice lush reverb or a distortion pedal and you're even more surprised. So I actually think there's a nice effect sonically and I'm just showing you there I'm going to do another video on the breadboard in the future we won't forget about that but sonically I think it's really nice to go from that really cheap speaker into something nicer create the basics of your patch or your sequence whatever you want to do and then take it and really make it sound nice and that's one of the things about the vocal modular is that it really does produce some sounds that are musically usable in all sorts of genres. I mentioned before that in a previous, I think, video one, this is getting close to video 10 on the Volca, that you probably couldn't use it for techno, but I think you, you really could actually. I think it would be usable in a lot of cases. What I'm going to be doing here to switch to this next hacking experiment is I'm using just a simple attenuator. It's one of the very cheap ones you can buy. They sell like I don't know, 10 of these, they probably come from China, and you can get them for like five bucks for just so many of them. What I'm doing is I'm going, I'm plugging in three patch points, and what's nice about the Volca is you can experiment. You're not gonna damage anything, even if it's not an in or an out, or you're not sure, what the heck, patch it, take a chance, try it out, and see what happens. What we're doing with the attenuator, essentially, is we're plugging in three DuPont cables, we're then attaching each to an alligator clip cable and then I'm taking those three ends and attaching it to three metal points on the attenuator, on the dial switch. What we'll get then is we'll be able to swing back and forth between three positions, essentially creating three different sonic effects depending on the patching. You'll be hearing that here. In some cases, if you're experimenting with an attenuator and it doesn't work, um, simply repatch. And this is an easy way to do it. This doesn't require any soldering. You could use different cables if you wanted to. There are some attenuators that actually have a, um, a basically a socket that is very much, it's the same as the male end of a DuPont cable. So what you could do in that case is get some of the female um, DuPont cables, female to male, plug those in and then plug it directly into the Volca without using alligator clips. I find that these are handy to use because you, you can just patch so many different things with a lot of different electronic components, whatever you happen to be working on. So I think it, it, you, can, you can tell from the Sonic examples here that it's pretty effective. Very easily then you can use a dial switch to dial in three different Sonic um, sounds or timbres depending on the patching, depending on what you're doing. Wouldn't necessarily have to be Sonic, right? You could use the CV block as well and do some things there. So for me, that's a cheap way of doing it. It's very simple, doesn't cost you anything. Again, you can get some of those alligator clip cables and use those if you like. You could solder directly onto the DuPont cables and I'm gonna show you that here in a second, basically showing you, um, I guess I would say is a fancier version of it. So let's take a look then at this fancier version. I took three of those exact same attenuator dial switches. 
I drilled holes. This is just a, a craft board from a place like Hobby Lobby. I drilled holes in the back to put my DuPont cables. And you can use any combination, again, depending on the length. Some of these should have been a little longer, but if you patch it correctly, you could use your extenders and uh, you'll want ample cable length. The ones that come with the uh, Volca aren't going to work. And as you can see there, what I've done is I've soldered the three points on there. I have to say that on one of my switches, I may have actually crossed uh, two solder points. So I'm gonna have to go back and, and check that out. So if you don't hear in one of the three dials as much effect, it's uh, the fact that this was a, a prototype. And it's funny even calling it a prototype because I'm not an electronics guy. I don't, I'm okay at soldering, but this, this takes very little effort, I have to say. You're basically just getting a box. You're drilling a hole in the top with a big enough drill bit. You're sticking the switch through the top. You're screwing that nice, um, gasket that goes on the top and then all you have to do is drill holes on the side to stick your DuPont cables in and out. If you want you could solder those to the attenuators or you can get those attenuators that have the um, same male DuPont ends that are already there and then you could just simply start patching away. So this will take you like no time to create. You could certainly use one attenuator, you could use two, you could use three, you could use four, um, and as many as you wanted to use. And then all you're doing, now keep in mind if I keep my three points for my right switch, um, my right dial together, then I know what I'm affecting and you're hearing some of the sonic effects. I'll say in a couple cases it's quite dramatic what you hear. So what you might want to do then if you're creating something like this, just make sure you keep your cables together. You could color code them. You could do that in any number of ways so that you know your three patch points for each of your three dials. And that's just an easy way to remember things. As I said earlier, I think it's really a nice opportunity to experiment and to be creative. You don't necessarily have to know a lot about modular synthesis or the building blocks of synthesis. And it will take you maybe some time to look over I like the uh, card that Korg provided as well as the instruction sheets, although I found those a little flimsy because they're those like really big pull-out sheets that are kind of hard to work with if you're in a small space. You know, they're like these giant sized sheets that fold up, but they do give you the sense of some basic patches and, and how to understand the uh, building blocks of semi-modular or Eurorack type synthesis. So I'm doing another example here with the second dial, turning it, hearing some, some interesting sonic effects. I can adjust parameters on the Volca as well. And I think if you're going to do this, it might be best to think about the ergonomics of it. As I said, the cables here should be longer. What I did this for originally was for my Olectron, and I still haven't gotten around to using or creating a video for that. And I thought, why don't I do a video um, doing what I'm calling the hacking using these three dials just to uh, experiment with patch points. It's so easy, like this is something that doesn't take any kind of electronics knowledge or even sonic knowledge to create something that's very useful and simple, but yet I think has a pretty dramatic effect. What could be cool is if you had a nice setup, if you had some of those cases you can get on reverb or stands rather that allow you to mount multiple vocals. Imagine if you had two or three of the Volca modulars and some other gear that use, use DuPonts. Again, we should be careful. I noted a few people on YouTube telling me that there could be an issue harming one of your devices if it's not grounded against the other device. So I wouldn't recommend doing that yet if you're going to patch between other DuPont devices. But this is pretty safe to patch within one device. But if you had a second Volca modular, you could have that set up on the stand and you could even create your own interesting array, maybe I'm thinking just like the Folktech Resist module, where you could have it coming down straight. By the way, you could use the Folktech Resist module with um, any of your DuPont gear, and it's essentially the same thing. They run about 40, 50 bucks, but this is a much cheaper version of it. So I don't know what you think of this, but for me, it's a fun way, kind of like using the 4060. I think it's a really fun opportunity to think about doing something different somewhat hacking your Korg Volca modular. So that was the experiment for today. I'll do a few more of these as I can and I also will continue to do my sonic experiments using this new Korg Volca modular which for me is a very fascinating amazing creative device. Uh, thank you for watching and please offer your comments and send me some links of your own video experiments that you've done using the Korg Volca modular. Have fun and happy patching and enjoy your creativity with this new device from Korg.